What's up? This is the Pubcast episode number two over here at Wawa's Boot Camp Straight representing day and night. I am joined here today, uh, this evening, wherever you're watching from, uh, by, uh, let's go to him, the EU resident analyst, Crimson. <laughs> How you doing, man? Hey, Dave. How's it going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then on the other side, in the middle, we switched it up. We switched it up this time. In the middle, we got North American fanboy, land experienced, <laughs> poor source in it. <laughs> How's it going, Dave? How's it going, Crimson? How you feeling yeah. about that uh, that grubby uh, performance from PBL? There, <laughs> yeah, everybody? yeah. I know. I know. It's bound <laughs> to happen. Of course, of course. As soon as I call them out, yeah. Hands, never hands sleep up. on. Never hands, sleep on the Russians. Yeah. Yeah, 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 hands up. You all know, right, all right, chill out, guys. Wrong, chill out, but... chill out. <laughs> <laughs> put the gloves on, put the gloves on. So today's uh, today's discussion is uh, is an important one that's been in the community for some time now. Almost every single time we uh, get news of a LAN event, it's always direct invites, open qualifiers. What's the format? What is the format? And there's always both sides. So we're going to try to break it down here today in our, uh, you know, 30-minute podcast, pubcast episode. Uh, so... I mean, we'll get right into this. We'll get right into this. So if you're new uh, to the scene, usually, uh, you know, you guys can help me out here. But usually uh, with these LAN events, you either get directly invited if you're a big name org or you have to grind it out and go against a bunch of other teams through like a bracket system to try to get the invite. Right. I mean, that pretty much cover it. Yeah, those pretty Pretty much covers it. All right. So, I mean, uh, and and people have... uh, pros and cons with this type of uh, format so we'll just uh we'll go over those pros and cons here today and uh, i guess we'll start with uh i believe crimson you know he's passionate over here so let's start with your passion man uh wh- yeah, which okay, one do you yeah. favor yeah yeah so i'm gonna throw out the uh my opinion which is that basically you just shouldn't be using open qualifiers in the scene like this okay um my main like yeah i feel pretty strongly about this right but like there's a, there's a whole number of like small reasons you got problems with like cheating and you got problems with you know people having a bad day one day you know they can't get through that um but i think basically like i think you have to prove yourself in the scene to be up there with the number of teams that go, get to go play at land i don't think you should just be able to rock up you and a bunch of friends turn up you play a couple of games in the open qualifiers and now you're a land you know team which is which we've seen happen a couple of times um and basically i think that's the main issue like i think you should have to go and play in some leagues you should have to go and show your metal before you you get a chance to play in the lands and i think it would improve the the quality of the lands and i think it would improve the quality of the scene if people were forced to go and you know participate in the scene i mean let's face it you should participate in the scene to be present at the big events in the scene is that you know all right all right so so (laughs) as far as the conversation goes and and the topic one point for direct invites uh so far so (laughs) one point there and uh you know before the show i know poro has some opinions about this so i'm just going to give you the floor real quick and then and then we'll get down and dirty okay uh i completely agree that yeah you shouldn't be able to just walk up and be able to come in i do think you need to participate in the scene that's why i think that you are completely friggin wrong and that (laughs) invites are the worst possible thing uh because you have teams no no names mentioned uh that participate in maybe one tournament here or there uh, and then get invited to the major tournaments just because they are backed by a large named organization that will draw a lot of views to the tournament which is a thing that needs to be done i understand that but if you're talking about strictly from a competitive standpoint i think that the open uh, the, the qualifier uh process is definitely the way to go now that being said i think that the qualifier process does need to have some limitations and a better structure arranged around it to make sure that you know it accounts for things like you know a bad day i don't think they need to be doing eight game qualifiers uh or bracket type stuff like that i think that the the longer the qualifier period is the better it is for you know all the teams that are participating so what's that number then what's that magic number in your book i mean you know i think if you're going to have a a land that has 20 games i think that having a 20 game qualifier is is reasonable i mean i think that you know honestly personally i think that you know 
going forward, things uh, should kind of try to model how GLL is doing things where they have their their entire season, their 20, or I, I'm not sure if it's 20 games, I might be wrong on this, yeah, but yeah. They, they have basically essentially an entire season, and then the LAN is the finals of that, that season. Hmm. Now, the one thing that kind of sucks about that is that you don't get you know, you don't get the Korean teams, you don't get the Chinese teams and South American teams. And what we've been seeing from recent lands, uh, PGL most most notably, is that the the Asian scene is starting to get a lot stronger. I mean, you saw OGN uh, and to say, so you saw uh, OMG performing really well towards the end. I mean, you saw them making some really, really yeah, dumb yeah. mistakes too. But you yeah. can see that they're progressively getting better. And I, I you know, it's it's hard to have you know, a, a qualifying phase, unless you were just going to do it for a, spe- a, a specific number of slots uh, yeah. for for the for those regions. Um, but I mean, you know, they've that, been strong. That starts getting into other things. Yeah, yeah. They've been but, strong. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah, just yeah. getting stronger with first person. I mean, they've been but, strong in third but ba- person. But basically, basically, the point is, I don't think What's that people point? should just get invited. I, I don't think they should just be able to show up to the land without having to prove themselves just because things change so often in PUBG competitive mm-hmm. right now. What who you know, the dominant team in one region this month may be middle of the pack to, to lower the pack next month. You just don't know. It there's so much change yeah. going on. So I know yeah, Crimson's but... main point, the cheater so, right? Crimson? I mean how, how do well, we find... Yeah, let's I mean you can't you're never gonna stop cheating in any like yeah, there's any situation. So there's nothing you can do about it. It's a bad part of open qualifiers but if you're gonna I mean there is there is something you can do about it it yeah. relies on the orgs to actually come through which yeah, I, in, in yeah. fairness I think that some of them have been doing that you yeah know, they I mean there are ways and bots and... you can do like I you can do ID checking and you can do like you know show us your passport before you sign up but for a tournament with like oh, you know thousands of teams signing up for open qualifiers you're just not going to have the manpower to go and check everyone's passport number and make sure yeah, that they're yeah, a real yeah. person etc but um but no so so cheating aside right i think um i guess what you're saying then is you would be happier with like a, with some regional open qualifiers because you know hand hand on heart right a lot of the asian teams aren't going to get through the open qualifiers so you would probably see maybe one or two asian teams at land possibly you know if they didn't have a regional open qualifiers and that i think would also be a problem because no. we see you know the growth of the scene in asia is huge and we don't want to hmm. you know yeah hmm. you have to be them. realistic about your viewer numbers and i mean yeah. when you know you know however many million viewer numbers are coming from china <laughs> yeah. i don't know you know whether who's whether that's you know real or not or inflated it doesn't really matter those all kind of going to go into the the promotion for the event and what you know events kind of take and package and deliver to the advertisers that they're selling advertising space to and saying look yeah. we have this all right, all right. so hold up on this point though on this point the advertisers the viewers uh you kind of brought this up um I mean, I guess this is more towards Poro because he's against the direct invites. But we have to admit, that's uh, at least one of the main thought processes, in my opinion, why these teams do get the direct invites. Uh, one, one, one in particular has been getting invite after invite, and they don't even really participate in uh, some of these lands or these, these online uh, tournaments. It's TSM, right? I mean, TSM, yep. they, they get the invites almost every time. And, uh, you know, they bring the viewers, though. I mean, they do have their their loyal fan base. So I totally get it. Uh, you know, I totally get it. So I guess uh, if we could just kind of talk about that, uh, Poro and, and Crimson, I mean, let, let's narrow it down. TSM. I mean, they get yeah, directly invited I mean, every time. What, what are yeah. our thoughts on them? I mean, not and not only, um, I mean, obviously, we're mainly talking about, but you look at GLL actual tournament um their main like online league they did open qualifiers to get into that league originally right and um you know tsm didn't get in and that's a huge blow to their you know to their numbers you can see you you compare the awesome viewing numbers to the gll viewing numbers and maybe two thousand of those viewers are probably tsm fans and that's and, a lot that's a lot especially and that's, right that now that's a big proportion of yeah. the viewer base and it you know and it grows the scene the people are watching you know they're obviously not G fans because they're not watching every single PUBG event, which makes sense. You've got a team, you want to go and follow it. So to say that, you know, 
you know, and I would say TSM are, well, are easily able to play in that league. They, you know, they're not a bad team. I'm not saying that they're, a, they're oh, not yeah, worthy yeah. No. of being in GLL. So I think to have a few more invites, uh, you know, into something like GLL or into, you know, PGL just would have helped boost the numbers on viewing, which is good. It helps get people involved in the scene. If I only watch TSM events, for example, then you're going to go and watch these lands, that sort of thing. And I think that's you know i think that's important it's basically. important yeah especially right now you know that uh, we are in that development stage i mean we just yeah. don't have yeah. the uh we have the pro teams right uh, a lot of pro teams that are talented but they just don't have that following yet so i mean it, it's kind of tough to uh pass over a squad in my opinion that has that following because at the end of the day you need the views if you want the money and if you want to be a pro you need that money to be there or else where, yeah. where are you going you know where are you going yeah i mean Something, something I just want to add to that as well is that I'm not saying the way that orgs currently invite teams is good. You know, luminosity getting invited to anything beyond Gamescom was ridiculous. Oh, toxic, toxic! Knows, yeah, but everybody knows that, right? They're not a team anymore. I can say that. I mean, there's a new team in town with the LG name, but um, you know, they obviously, obviously, the way you invite teams. If I'm saying I like direct invites, then. You know, I only like direct invites if the orgs that are doing them know what they're doing and invite them for the right reasons, etc. You know, some of that's going to be viewership, sure. But like TSM are not a bad team by any means. They they can play with the top teams. Mm -hmm. um, so invite. Well, Poro <laughs> actually saw they can, they can finish, well, they can finish eighth we'll or ninth yeah, consistent, we'll consistently consistently yeah, amongst yeah. the top teams. True, uh, I mean, true, true. but I I think that I think that TSM would be the first to agree with you that that they don't really deserve the invite anymore as as far as like from a competitive standpoint you know they the, like you said, i mean every single time it's consistently consistently eighth or ninth and while that's that's good it's still it still feels like there are stronger teams out there that may have gotten you know it, you know maybe they finished fifth in in terms of qualifying whenever you know the 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 top four were the ones that got the the invite. So I I mean I don't know I don't know what's the TSM question is is just really weird because I feel like they're good but I always feel like they're they're this team that's like I keep waiting for them to take that next turn and I and I said it during the last podcast yeah. I I honestly thought that that PGL was going to be the time when you would see TSM take that turn and start really progressing and it mm. just didn't happen so it, it's just kind of like this constant waiting period but you know as far as like I, I I'm firmly in the camp of let's get qualifiers qualify for everything um but if we were to do invites i feel like there's maybe four teams in the world right now that that could really qualify for those invites every single time and i'd feel good about them you know mm -hmm. consistently participating at a high level d d d yeah. regardless of when the invite came down phase like i mean easy phase easy. phase right now uh, i think is, is an easy one um I'd probably. Uh, I'd, yeah, it's hard to pick out the well, other. I mean, I, I would put you know Grubby slash Avangar uh, in there. I'd put you know I'd, I'd honestly I'd still put Vitality in there. We gotta and... put Ghost. You have to put Ghost. Do you? Man. You have to. Put like Ghost. I look, I I I Ghost is like in my heart. Like I was the I lost my shit whenever they won that PGL. <laughs> like I was all about it, but that was that was ghost two weeks after forming a new roster so mm -hmm. is that going is that kind of consistency going to remain we we still don't really know it's kind of the same with liquid we saw liquid come in and tear it up whenever they first got their new roster and now it's kind of kind of been like this they're still a great team great team but the the consistency just isn't always there they didn't qualify for GLO. uh you know it's and, and like and i hate to say i hate to call out any team like that on and anything really because there's always so many you know extenuating circumstances that go into things like you know i, I like I, I would say optic would be up there cloud nine would be up there oh yeah um, sure. but you know like these are teams that have recently performed really well at land mm -hmm. and and for that i would say also ghost um but you know it's just can you can you honestly say in your heart that a month from now the same teams that are performing this well right now are going to still be performing there's only one team that i can really think that that i would say that about and that's phase 
All right. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, if we're in open qualifiers, though, wouldn't we say if we're so confident in our teams that they'll be able to qualify regardless? I mean, I guess this is more towards yeah. you, Crimson. Or are you just scared that they well, might not yeah. make it? It's just, yeah, it's just that we've seen that they, they haven't for whatever reason. That's the problem, you know. You know when you were saying, I mean, I keep going back to TSM because they're a perfect example. A perfect example, yeah. They, they just get they, they get a lot of bad press obviously because they get these invites that maybe people say they don't deserve and you know fair enough there are reasons on both sides of that but liquid is another good one i mean i would put liquid up in the top you know five teams in the world mm -hmm. but they're not going they're not going to play in the gll finals because they didn't qualify because they just formed two weeks before that tournament so yeah. you know they didn't, they didn't get through the qualifiers didn't get into pgl for basically the same reason um so do you hope and, that they you know, were that's... directly invited then i mean is that something that you would have yeah yeah to see? yeah and i think and i think now anybody looking at me now would probably invite them it's just the timing of the particular roster swap that they did, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's like you said about these, the, you know, the circumstances the teams are under, that's going to affect your open qualifiers just as much as it's going to affect whether you deserve the invite. You know, you might be, you know, as you say, you might have just formed a roster and you'd be suddenly, you know, got that, that burst of speed, you win an open qualifier and then, you know, you don't show up. And, and there's certainly teams that, that won the qualifiers taking, you know, PGL as an example that, did not show up in any way, you know. And mm -hmm. at the same time, everyone went, why didn't you invite FaZe? You know, FaZe made it through open qualifiers great, but if they hadn't have done, then, you know, it's a completely different tournament without one of the top teams. And it's not impossible for that to happen, you know. Huh, I think, I mean, I think the, thing that, the thing that I just keep getting hung up, hung up on yeah, you hung is up. just, I'm hung up, I'm hung up. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm hung up on the, that, the, you know, the whole month to month right like yeah. in in like i just you know if you because you consider the fact that qualifying rounds are are done you know way way prior to the actual tournament itself i think that they need to be done sooner yes yeah, i think they're closer closer to the event um as as close as possible to the event as they can be so well you can still arrange for travel and everything which i think gll did that for for their finals like we didn't know until a week ago who the who was going to be uh yeah. the, the teams that qualified for that so i mean i think that that's that that's something that needs to be done um you know having having qualifying rounds or picking invited teams months in advance of a land i think is is just not it's a little weird it's not it's not it's not really good for how the scene is shaping up right now i, I don't i mean i don't know of anybody that would say that i that i'm i'm wrong about like this this whole month to month progress like you know do you think that the strongest teams in the league right now are st are going to be the strongest teams in the league a month and a half from now or will they even be there will they will they have folded will they pull a penta esports where they're doing great in top of two leagues doing okay in another league and then all of a sudden they just dissolve i mean it, or or the same with mlgb or you know any number of organizations it's it's just like hmm. i mean just the way it's so volatile right now it just seems that you can't really do anything that far in advance and having direct invites like that just kind of like it rewards these teams for being fortunate enough to or not, i don't want to say being fortunate they earned their right to be signed by these major orgs but hmm. it's also kind of you know the major org is going to be behind you whether or not you're performing at the top level or not and how and does the new blood get you... involved then too i mean how does the new blood get involved we're always going to yeah, like how do we teams. how do we how do we get teams yeah, like I mean... wildcard how do we get teams like i mean obviously space station gaming and the e united perform like kind of underperformed when it came to pgl yeah. but just the fact that they had the opportunity to to get out there and be seen and get this land experience is going to be huge so i, yeah, I don't know i, mean, I don't it, know yeah. what the right answer is yeah, I think the time is, is definitely, I mean, I think, um, you know, we, we say direct invites, that's not the only way to do it, right? You get closed qualifiers where you invite to a closed qualifiers. And I think the way that it, that it should be done, in my opinion, again, but the way it should be done is not invites by org. You know, I'm not saying that because Luminosity have Luminosity, therefore they should get invited, you know, I think looking across the leagues, you know, sitting down with a bunch of people, the way that Awesome did it. Really, was really nice i like that where you know they got the people together who the were committee. involved in yeah. the scene the committee and they asked them you know we're, we're going to invite these however many teams it was and then the rest of these teams we we want you to decide who should play in the league and you know something like that is good i mean again well, you've I got that issue of you know i think that's the new blood issue though you know yeah yeah for sure but i mean that list of teams came from 
letting anyone sign up and the ones true, that true. weren't picked by the committee was because well who, you know you haven't had a chance to show hmm. yourself yet i definitely think that that there's something one thing that i i think needs to be done as we kind of go forward especially if we're going to do like i think closed qualifiers is a good idea yeah but we need to we need i think they need to start splitting eu EU, EU East and EU West or EU North, EU South, whatever. Something needs to be done about EU because there's way too many teams signing up for these events and they you know, they hardly get a chance because there's so many good teams in EU right now. You look at the, the, the people, the number of teams that signed up for the PGL qualifiers. I mean, EU had what, like 12 lobbies yeah. while NA had like four? I yeah. mean, it's, it's kind of ridiculous right now, right? So I think that EU... Uh, I think that splitting EU into, you know, two separate sections, I think would benefit a lot of people. Um, and, you know, we could still, you could still do the closed kind of closed qualifier setting with that. Uh, but that, that, that starts getting weird because then it's like, okay, how do you, how do you distinguish it geographically? Hmm. You know? Well, yeah, uh, I, I have no idea. So then I guess, I guess we need some type some, of unified yeah. rule set, right? I mean, I know, uh, a lot of people have been talking about that as far as points go, <laughs> as far nice. as settings go. I mean, uh, across all the Little tournament please. organizers, you right? Like, if there is just some type of rule set, kind of similar to back when we were in that argument, third person versus third, uh, first person, uh, you know, somehow all the tournament organizers, they said, let's just do first person. And now we're here, you know, in the first person kind of age, right? Um, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe they could work out something where, you know, we can all either agree on one thing or the other i mean i mean I, I think that i think we could have done that but i think it might be too, too far gone to do that now Never because too late. Before, Never too late. before well before it used to be you know it used to be pubg online and awesome and then uh then gll got evolved and then curse uh curse was in there somewhere and now we've got stream me we've got esu we've got like all you know all these leagues that just keep forming and, and keep coming up and now it's kind of getting to the point like okay, now you're starting to get like way, all these people trying to get involved to come together and, and set a point system. This is something that, that we should be doing with Blue Hole or, or PUBG Core. Um, yeah. You know, now that, they, now that we've got the new esports director in Alex Penn, I think that's a great thing. I think that, you know, the, from the few conversations that I've had with him, he seems like a really good guy. He seems like really kind of motivated to, to get involved and do stuff. Uh, same with Harris Hall, same with, uh, uh, she, she's, yeah you know very committed so i think that that in the coming months something needs to be done where we get all these orgs together or uh you know get team representatives in there get to representatives in there and get pubg core in there and just just hash it out well, get talking their about rule that dreamhack set. isn't pubg kind of involved with with dreamhack i mean are, are they kind of got their hands in it i'm not so sure but we see that uh it's all open qualifiers yeah. I mean, they say in their rule yep. set, no yep. one is going to yep. be invited. Nobody. Well, and, uh, and that's going to that's kind of interesting as well because it's like, okay, do you, as a team, do you take do you do you go for the open qualifier? If you don't make it, then you just take the risk of, you know, packing up all your shit and going to Austin and trying to get in from the BYOC yeah, yeah, two chances. qualifier. Or, two chances. Yeah, I mean, uh, which is cool, but I mean, it's going to be a lot more. Uh, it's going to be better for the North American teams. Yeah, yeah. I mean, true. it's not yeah, like yeah. you know, it's not like if your EU org doesn't, you know, doesn't manage to make the cut. If you come in fifth in qualifying when they're taking the top four, are you all of a sudden now going to, you know, pack fly up your entire there. team yeah. and fly out to Austin for for mm. a week in the hopes that maybe you qualify through the BOIOC? I mean, interesting. You could, yeah, I, but, I think probably not, right? <laughs> I mean, a major org would probably be able to foot that bill. But you, but you would have to miss a bunch of tournament games and scrims and practice and disrupt your whole routine just for a chance. So, I mean, yeah, that's the problem. Oh, so it seems like poor you, like you don't like I, this. You don't like no. I mean, I, yeah, I mean Whoa! Two points for direct. <laughs> I mean, I, I I do like it. I do like it from the standpoint that um, I, I don't. I just don't like the BYOC part of it. That's, okay, that's yeah. my. That's just the second me. chance. Okay, but it, I mean, I get I get really why they're doing right. it, but it's like it, it it just kind of like favors North American teams. Yeah. Uh, it favors Southern North American teams better. Not that it, I know if there's a whole lot of Southern <laughs> North American teams or teams headquartered. Uh, like I know, I mean, I know there's a lot of players that live in Texas. I know there's quite a few players that live in Austin. A couple of TSM players live in mm. Austin. A couple of Cloud9 players live around there. So, I mean, I think that that there's there's going to be, uh, and then there's a bunch of teams in Dallas uh, that could make that drive. But you know, these are all teams that are made, you know, funded by major orgs and will most 
more than likely make the qualifying cut. Hmm. Uh, well, we'll I, find out. I, well, that, that's going to be interesting. But if to they see, don't, then they get that second chance. Yeah. And yeah. you know, now you and your friends who you know got your computers together to go to try to you know throw caution to the wind and and play you know you, you drove down to austin to to try for the byoc now you're having to compete against envy and cloud nine <laughs> and you know all these teams in these lobbies and it's kind of like well what's the point you know like i didn't think i was gonna have to be going against these guys all right let's so, get crimson yeah. in here yeah. we're wrapping it up here we got five minutes yeah. left uh poor old... five minutes left. Right. yeah yeah poor right. we, we know we yeah, know i mean we know. on, we on the dream hack, yeah on the dream hack thing with with the yeah, open qualifiers, right? I'm just going to be really interested to see the level of competition there because, you know, we know, like, in the past, even with invites and, and even with invites and closed qualifiers, we still got teams that don't make it to land that probably should have been there if you wanted the top 16 teams. So, you know, when we're gonna, I think we're going to see more of that at a fully open qualifiers event. You're going to see more teams not making it through for whatever reason, you know, roster problems, or maybe they just don't perform on the day. There's cheaters, there's all these other aspects of it. If if the level of competition is lower, it just makes the the esport look worse, and that's my that's my main issue with it. Right? If you and your friends get through, then good job. You know, you're in a hundred k tournament for PUBG. Like you're great. You earned your place. Yeah. You yeah you earned your place, but I I don't want to watch you, you know. And when oh, I see so, them, okay. <laughs> I am Whoa! sorry, I don't. <laughs> I see the problem here. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I but that's agree the thing. We that. want it to be a spectator sport. We want mm -hmm. them to do the good rotations that we want to watch. We don't want a lobby of random guys running around because look at pub games. If that's the quality of our like top level of esports, then you know we've got no esport left. You know, we well, if they're if they're the ones qualifying teams. though, yeah, but they have they, to be good, I guess, guess. Yeah. Yeah, they have to be good enough, but they don't have to be the best sixteen teams in the world to get through. Hmm. I mean, so I guess I guess it's I guess it's just a question of whether or not you want the best competitive teams going through, or if you want the teams that are going to give you the most viewers. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's a combo because I think uh, I don't know if it is because no, if you want the most viewers, it, you're getting TSM, you're getting teams. Liquid, you're getting yeah, Dignitas, yeah, yeah. you're getting like all these major orgs, but that's not going to be your most competitive lobby. No, no, and I, I'm not saying invite by org, and I'm not saying specifically, but I'm saying that you when you invite, you're more likely if you invite right. That's the problem. That's the that's the main issue, right? We've seen people inviting people by org and that is just there's no no point in doing that and i know why they do it and it's well there's a point uh, the views well, right? yeah, okay, the money, okay. the there, there, there is a point I mean. yeah i'm i'm saying invite purely on some kind of uh you know look at the scene and say which are the 16 best teams let's get a load of people together let's get people who know about the scene let's get even the players whoever let's pull them all together and say what are the best teams let's bring those guys to land to fight it out so we can say these are the best teams not these are the best teams that happen to get through eight games you know and these are the best teams that happen to get through 20 games even i mean if you you win 20 i mean that's like you're saying basically like you know I mean, you have to be pretty consistent to, to get out of Yeah, of course, but then you would be saying that every LAN that has 20 games, you would be saying, well, those, you know, the, the top three, that's the top three in the world right now because they have 20 games. I mean, that's not, it doesn't make them the top of the scene just because they happen to be in that LAN and got through. You can't say that the 16 teams who played at PGL are the top 16 teams, but they're the teams that got to play at PGL. So, you know, that's just 20 games to show your worth. It's the same as open qualifiers, you know? Well, you can't say that there was teams of PGL because you also had teams that were invited. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sure, sure. All right, <laughs> all right. You guys obviously two minutes left. Not going to agree uh, uh, on anything, which is uh, <laughs> it, it's kind of. I mean, that's how the scene is, though. It's not just you guys. That's how everybody within the competitive scene feels right now. Uh, you either have an opinion on this side or that side. You you like red. You like blue. There's not uh, in the middle. I believe that makes green. Uh, but um, regardless, <laughs> regardless. I, I like the green. I like the green. I understand why like the, the, the teams get the invites. Like, I understand. Pretty. You need the viewers. You need viewers or else, you know, no, ma no matter how much uh, you might be upset about uh, TSM getting invited, if no one's watching, there's not going to be a scene. And uh, right now, it's tough. It's tough out there for PUBG. And uh, well, we need I, views. I got I to tell you, Dave. I, you I got think a minute left. Let's go. Tell me. I, I will tell you, I think that, that the GLL finals are going to be a really, really solid indicator of how uh how this how, how doing a straight qualifier would work 
uh, because you're not going to have uh, you're not going to have TSM there. You're not going to have any invited teams. Every team that's going to be at the GLL finals earned their place there uh, through through a long season, and I think that that's going to be probably the most competitive land we have seen to date. And it's going to be great, great viewing. It's going to be awesome competitive PUBG. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not that brings viewers, that's what we have to look for. Yeah, that's yeah. What we it have could to be see. competitive, but there's going to be 200 people watching it. Then it's all for nothing. I mean, I think, think about it. I think it's going to draw the viewers. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I really hope it does, yeah. Because Poro is going to be there. Like that, Leaks. That's the Leaks. way, <laughs> yeah. that's like the way to do it. Not that I know yeah. of. Um, yeah. All right. So uh, listen, you guys, let these guys know how they can find you. Maybe if they want to uh, DM you uh, personally about their opinions, maybe they agree about <laughs> something, do, maybe yeah, they don't. Do. Uh, let's Bring go to Crimson up. first. How, how can these uh, Wawa Bootcamp viewers find you, man? Oh, yeah. Well, Twitter is just like, that's pretty much the best way. Yeah. I think it's all right, above Poro? us, right, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's hit, above us. Hit me on the hit me on the Twitter tweets. Hit you on the Pora, on the tweets. At Porosaurus underscore NA. All right, make sure if you guys are aggravated at either of these guys to hit them up, <laughs> let them know. And uh, I mean, we got some comments from our first episode, so thanks for those comments. Uh, I forgot your name, thank but you. but thank you, man. Yeah, Keep them yeah. coming because uh, we're Keep always interested. On I love it. <laughs> we're always interested <laughs> in uh, in getting ideas and, and you know feedback on what you guys want to watch here but uh this yeah. has been episode two direct invites versus open qualifiers for wawa's boot camp and uh we'll see you next week guys Ta -da.